Does anyone out there love CSS? A uh, few of you. Well, hopefully I'll make it feel a little bit better for the rest of you. Uh, I was previously at Splunk where we had hundreds of developers consuming each other's React components. And at this scale, it's critically important. Sorry? Not so close? Closer? All right. At this scale, it's critically important for everyone to conform to APIs. That's because uh, the effects of changes need to be deterministic. With JavaScript, if you change the signature of a public function, you know that you could break something for someone. Libraries like Style Components provide an API for adding CSS, but that's not an API for which styles uh, can break or which styles it's safe to add. We need to ensure that changes to CSS are deterministic too, particularly since many of those changes are visual and don't break automated testing. Uh, here's a simple example. At the top, we have one version 1.0 of our button with a label and a menu icon. And at the bottom, someone's changed the padding and the font size to make the button smaller. Uh, the original button, the original developer of the button is unaware of this and never intended to it occur. So when we have version 1.1 and we introduce this new feature it's of uh, truncation, it's, it's accessed via property, a uh, React property. It shouldn't be breaking anything. It's 1.1. It's a feature release. It should, everything should keep working. But if we look at this example of this small button, now it's extra large with teeny tiny text because we've had to move some of the padding onto interior comp elements instead of on the wrapper. Uh, these types of breakages are incredibly difficult to track down. It's not practical to visually inspect thousands of buttons across your applications. This issue exists from most any CSS property, including things like color that don't affect size, uh, but can affect accessibility or, or legibility. Uh, we ensured that consumers of the components should never have to reach into the component to change appearance. Uh, everything here is handled by properties, size, appending and prepending was a really common use case for us, uh, as well as primary secondary and theme. Uh, the only CSS that should be added when composing a component are those elements related to layout. And when you look at that, there's really only 32 CSS properties that are necessary to place a component within a layout. Uh, none of the other CSS properties should be overridden with a component with appearance. The only issue here is with display. Display can affect both internal and external layout, uh, or as the W3 spec calls it, inside and outside. Um, I had a good conversation, no, this is not there. Uh, I had a good conversation with Leah Vero and some other people at W3C, and I, ideally we would have display as two properties, outside and inside. Unfortunately, this creates so many edge case scenarios that browser developers don't want to support it, such as putting Flexbox inside of a table cell. Uh, but does display really need to be configurable? Modern layout methods of Flexbox and Grid don't require a modification of display on children. Uh, in the case of inline block, you can make it a prop, you can put a wrapper, it works okay. Uh, you can also use an alternate layout method. And uh, is changing a button to a table cell really supportable or necessary? There's so many ramifications to this, it's best to avoid the situation. So we, we want to have our component having all of the CSS properties and people that are composing it having 31. So I've created a NPM organization uh, with a few packages that, to help us get started with this. Uh, the first one is simply a list of those 31 properties. Uh, another validates a block of CSS so that it only includes those 31, package, uh, 31 properties. And perhaps the most useful thing is a ESLint plugin and it'll look at for uh, style components and it'll look for any cases that you are composing another component and ensure that it only includes those 31 properties. You can add some exceptions to that, uh, but that's not really an API, that's just the best practice. I've done some experimentations with forking uh, style components, so when you're creating the component, you can say which type of component is it. Does it have no style, or does it have all of the style? Uh, it works, but it really needs some major backing if we're gonna go in this direction. Um, so your component, uh, your component CSS is an API, and you need to consider how to define, manage, and enforce that API. Otherwise, you'll be frequently making changes that are going to create unknown breakages across your products. 
So how will you manage change? Please uh, check out the GitHub repo. I'm also interested in opportunities in Europe. So uh, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>